Uh, good morning. Sterling Chu here, Second Growth Homes. We're heading over to work at Corner Bay. And look at this day we have here in Southeast Alaska. Still snow on the mountain tops. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm heading over to Sawmill uh, for an order that I have right now for five shed kits. I'm uh, making really good progress on it, moving right through it. So we're gonna get over there and hopefully just have a really, really good day. I've got a couple issues with the mill, a couple parts I need to order, and everything takes like a week to get here. So we'll just we'll go see how we do here today. Wow, what a day. Every day is different in Southeast Alaska, but that is a beautiful one. All right, bye Tenneke. Here's my uh, 351 Ford Windsor. It's in the Jenny. It's been running just a tiny bit funny. I, I put a brand new uh, distributor on it last year. So I was thinking maybe the timing's just not quite right. So we're gonna check the timing real quick here. lovely day. Okay, we're driving up to the mills now and get a couple of these nice second growth logs. We start milling. Oh, wow. Well, it is just beautiful today. It's amazing in Alaska, the sun comes out and it's just so hot and powerful. Go from raining and cold to it's just absolutely hot and beautiful really quickly. Oh, you're gonna gas up here. Hope the mill is just gonna run absolutely awesome today. And we can whip out these 62 by fours, move on to the next part of this order. Got a beautiful pile of lumber so far, and the good news about this hot, dry weather is that it's really helping to dry out fast. The second growth spruce dries out incredibly fast. It's uh, one of the real good attributes about the wood, it makes it easy to build cabins with. Even the tongue and groove, two or three weeks, and the one inch boards will go to absolutely perfectly dry. Um, it's awesome. Old growth spruce and cedar take a lot longer. So, one of the coolest things about second growth. Look. We're gonna go ahead and give this mill another blast of sea foam today. I did one the other day. Let's go ahead and do it. Hope that'll kind of help give the fuel system just a clean out to start the year. Need to get a new fuel tank. I bought this one ah, probably 12 years ago. It's got some little rust spots on the inside and the bottom that are bothering me. So, okay. So the uh, morning check procedure for these mills is nice and easy. You just it's an air cooled engine, so there's no coolant. So all you gotta do is check the oil. And I'm able to see right through here. So I don't even need to take the dipstick all the way out. I just pull it up all the way. It's perfectly full. And it is ready to be changed. So do an oil change on this. 
Volkswagen engine of the couple day, next couple days. If you'd like to come along with me for that, it's kind of cool. It's uh, it's got an oil filter that's like a built-in screen that you take out and clean every time. It's really cool. These Volkswagen engines are pretty cool machine. So connector battery. Probably need to jump it one more time. I uh, I'm going to Juno to deliver this order to the A cabin as soon as I finish the shed order. So at that point I can get some nice new battery for this baby. I brought three batteries out with me last trip. So <laughs> you go through a lot of batteries and you got a lot of machinery. So let's give her one try and then we'll juice it up. Nope. Okay, I think that battery is toasted too. Okay, jumper cable. Yeah, I can't remember what happened. I think we had some, had to take the battery off this mill for something else at the end of last summer and the good one I had didn't come back. So let's go ahead and get some power going here. Should only have to jump it for one more day. <laughs> Maybe two. Maybe three, we'll see. Okay. Usually the mill runs better and better, like the more you use it, you know. Um, it's like any engine; they they like to be used, likes to be ran. So, change the oil. We get a new uh, battery on this. Should get another year out of it, no problem. Huh. So we're gonna start the truck. and uh, come over here and start at the fork. Wow, this is great over here today. Okay, we'll dump our slash and start making some two by fours.
make some lumber. Another nice, perfect, uh, medium sized uh, sucker of spruce logs. going out in the woods logging soon so we'd like to come out and see these trees in their natural form see them fall limb see us fall limb and buck and yard the trees out uh, please remember to click on the like and subscribe button below because we're going logging soon we're using up our timber
second growth just like butter. Old growth, Sitka spruce and yellow cedar are the other kinds of woods I cut and hemlock will have a lot of issues. Second growth, just all day long, easy, smooth cutting. important things about logging is like when something's going good like you know you're out in the woods and your saws are all working and you got all your equipment out there and everything's just happening you just want to keep going like when it's good it's good that's when you got to make your dollars 
because more often than not, your breakdowns will happen from the machine sitting and the saw is sitting and stuff like that. You know, first day back, a lot of stuff will break down. So what we got going on today is the mill's working, which is great. Uh, honestly, I had to put a little bit of work into it starting this year, but it's really doing great for a start. So what we want to do now is we just want to keep it going. Just keep nice and careful, nice and easy, don't break anything. Just so carefully, just keep spitting those two by fours out. There's our slash pile starting to stack up. Can't wait to uh, have that dry and start burning it in my log boiler, the big wood furnace. That's gonna be really fun. So here's the log pile starting to shrink. But we still got a ways to go, we're doing good. There's a few big ones hiding in there. Check we got about four more full-length sectro trees right now, so that's a decent amount. Is Maggie coming with me? Let's swing in here, see if we can pull this big one out of the bottom.
break that one off. I just ran out of gas. I, I started that cut and I was like, man, I haven't even fueled this thing up today, but it's ready to be sharpened up too. Let's get a little bill. Oh, okay. We'll just try this once. See if we can do it without hurting anything. Not something that I do. I rarely, very, very, very rarely would do something like this. I think with the second growth, you can usually get it. There we go. Yep. That won't. Uh, that won't hurt me at all. With old growth, you got to be really careful bucking it because if you get tear outs like that, you know, you saw it was like starting to tear down the log. You can lose like a lot of timber from bad bucking. So funny in this video because I just haven't really been doing any of that. I've just been bucking them straight across. And honestly, the second row is such a strong, lightweight wood that it's really okay to do that. And I haven't wasted a single uh, board so far. Okay, let's go get this baby on the mill and uh, see how we're doing. We gotta change the oil today, so I might do it after this log, see how we're doing.
apply for. It's really going to be a surprisingly high yield increase. Oh no, well, everything was so, so great. I had my first issue in a while. This has never happened to me before, but if I'd been paying enough attention, I could have stopped it. So this is pretty bad. I could tell that one of my um, upright, one of these log clamps, that's what you're seeing right there, was loose. Like it wasn't fastened down all the way. So I guess it was really loose and it's actually not down on the bed all the way and I hit it with the saw. Never happened to me, 15 years. So let's see where we're at and yeah, we're okay. So the only damage is the edger blade looks okay, which is great. I stopped it in time. So we just lost uh, some of these teeth off the edger blade, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. So. I think we'll go ahead and just take a minute and change the oil, change these teeth, get everything all set up, and we will uh, try this again here. It's too bad. Too bad. All right, well, we'll do a uh, how to change the teeth on your mobile dimension sawmill video right now. It's one of the big bonuses of uh, YouTube is when something bad happens, well, Usually gives me a chance to do a how-to video or something like that. And uh, some of those videos actually do really, really well. So you got this cool tool that clamps onto this tooth holder in the blade. And you get it in there and give it a couple whiff taps. Yep, pull it out. That spins right out of there. There's our old tooth. Poor guy. Yeah, 15 years I've never hit any steel with this mill, so that was a little scary. I know it can be bad. There could be pizza carbide flying around and stuff like that. So luckily this one was really mellow. It just came against it. Didn't knock the blade at all. So then you put the receiver, the tooth holder back in. And you hold the tooth just so it started. Just spin it back in. And then. Tap until it's all the way in there. So. It's not the end of the world. Go around, get these new teeth in real quick, get sharpened up, and then I gotta get this log done, get it off the mill, get the sawdust out of there, and fix those log rollers, and we'll be set. Oh, I always feel kind of stupid when you do stuff like that, because I knew when I put that log on there, I could tell that that one was loose when I was clamping it, and I uh, just let it go, which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>
change. So my uncle was a Volkswagen mechanic. That was pretty cool. So this is a Volkswagen engine that would be in like a, pretty sure it's the same exact engine in like a VW Bug. And when I first got the mail, he was up here in Alaska visiting. And he told me, he said, oh, I don't know, right side socket. He said, that engine is gonna last as long as you change the oil, Sterling. And I really took that to heart. So, I've been really religious about changing the oil. I actually got, it was really cool. My dad and I got a full case, like a big case of uh, straight 30 weight engine oil. And I changed the oil in this mill for like 10 years off of that case. I finally ran out. And uh, this time we're just going to go to a normal 10W30 modern oil. So, yeah, my uncle said that's going to last as long as, depending on how often you change the oil. So, oh, shit. Not the right socket again. Oh. I guess it is metric even back in the day. So it's got kind of a cool oil filter. That's uh here we go. It's like a screen in here, I'll show it to you. So you never have to change the like buy a new oil filter, which is really nice. Um and it seems to really work. This is the first change of the season. And while I'm really religious about it, I don't have an hour meter or anything, so I don't, you know, I don't think I changed it at the end of last season. I usually change it every couple weeks when we're hammering on it. So we'll see how much is in this little screen filter. It, uh, it'll often show a lot of this white gunk which is, um, I think is dust, you know, like a little bit of that micro fine spruce dust gets into the uh, motor all the time. So pull the drain plug, pretty straightforward. And it's got this little nuts to take off. little nuts there's about six of them and they've got little copper washers and they hold a plate and behind that plate is the oil filter so just got to get these all loosened up reach up in there and real carefully we're gonna take those nuts off and we're not gonna lose any of them we're not gonna lose any of the little copper washers behind every one because oh it's a little hot I've never had any spare so uh. Just be careful. Oh, 
This feels good. It's been a while since I changed the oil. Huge part of logging, milling, is machinery maintenance and keeping your equipment going. And it's probably half the job. I mean, it is like when you live out here and you've got older equipment, the process is not like calling a repair guy, you know, it's taking it apart, figuring out what's wrong, ordering the part, waiting for the part, putting the part on there. Whew. That is a little hot still. So it's pretty cool because I'm the kind of person that when I was growing up as a kid, I always liked and wanted to do mechanic stuff. Like I was always trying to take engines apart and stuff, but I was never like one of my, some of my other friends who were like gifted mechanics from young ages. You know, I, I, it was a slow, slow time coming for me, man. So I was never one of these people that was just like a super gifted mechanic. Like I don't, I'm not really, don't have that kind of mechanical mind when I was starting out. But after, got that one, 15 years of working on the equipment here at Corner Bay, I've really learned a lot and I got a lot of experience and I've achieved some pretty big repairs over the years. And the skills I've learned here at Corner Bay repairing this equipment have helped me out hugely with moving to the city because car mechanics are just incredibly expensive now. I mean, to the point where it's like barely worth it to fix your car. It's crazy to me, but that's just the world we live in now. So these mechanic skills at Corner Bay allow me to do all kinds of stuff. So we do all our own car maintenance, you know, I mean, everything brakes, I mean, everything, U joints, wheel bearings. Got it. Oh, I almost dropped one. Whatever you need to do, we'll do it. And it saved me, my sister, my family, myself, so much money over the years. It is amazing. So, like my truck right now, the 2008 F-150, I bought it for $3,000, the blown transmission. I can't believe I did that. Ordered a transmission on eBay. And I was able to replace it myself. Now I've got a half decent truck. So, you know, this logging has really benefited me just in so many different ways. Okay, the last washer is there. Last washer, come on, baby. Ow. Oh, that oil's a little hot. <laughs> All right, so the sawmill specifically takes a lot of maintenance. You got to give your sawmill a lot of love if you want it to work for you. I think in a big company, that would be like having really rigorous maintenance schedules, you know, every, this many hours, this many hours, this many hours. We're a small operator.
that's important, but it's almost more important to just look over and check every single bit of the mill every day. Like just check everything. And <laughs> I got my last washer here. I just don't want to drop it. Come on, Sterling. Come on, baby. I got it. All right. Oh. Okay. Okay, so this big plate comes out, and then there is a screen in here. Yeah, gosh, it just looks clean. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty black, ready for an oil change, but Definitely not overdue or anything. Okay, I do actually have six nuts and six washers. That is incredible that I haven't lost that. I shouldn't even say it. Knock on wood. Where's the wood? Where's the wood? Incredible I haven't lost one all those years. All right. Well, this is surprisingly clean. We just need to give this a quick wipe with a rag. We'll get uh, put back together. <laughs> 